Hi, this is Mike with AskTractorMike.com. I've been doing a series of videos talking about some of the older tractor companies and we've actually been in the process of, of talking about fixing up an older Oliver that was in the fence row for a number of years and I'm talking today with Glenn Welters who's, who's at Welters Farm Supply in Verona, Missouri and they have a, a salvage yard devoted to mostly Minneapolis Moline but also White and Oliver and, and some of those brands that kind of came together under one company. Yeah. And, and I, I want to talk today about the Minneapolis Moline brand. Uh, Glenn, that's your heritage and your passion. Yeah. You've got hundreds of them down here with parts that you're recycling. and Recycling or uh, what do you call it? Repurposing. Re Re yeah, yeah. 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 repurposing. Yeah. And uh, tell us a little bit about the Minneapolis Moline brand, how it came to be, and then what happened to it. Well, the Minneapolis Moline actually is a merge between, um, uh, I think it's Minneapolis Plow Company and the Moline Iron and Steel. I don't. They merged in 29, like a lot of companies was in 29. Through the hard times, these lots of companies merged. The Minneapolis was part of the merger between Twin City and Minneapolis Iron, but through there they just pretty much stayed. A lot of their parts was interchangeable. Uh, they made about three different sizes of chassis and kind of built from there as far as the Z models all through the years. The U model, the transmission rear end is similar on the U's all the way up to about 59 and all hand clutch tractors was the basis of the U series. And what was the claim to fame of, of Minneapolis Moline? Why, why would people buy that brand of tractor? Uh, I guess I would say mostly the slow RPM and the large cubic inch of the tractors compared to the competition um, at that time. I mean, even in the later years, they still always uh, had more cubic inch than all their competition. The, the Minneapolis Moline uh, got bought out by a white motor company, which was the white Freightliner people. Uh, they, they, they had uh, Minneapolis Moline, they also bought Oliver and a company called Cockshut, which Cockshut the folks in, Canadian. In, in Canada will know. And, uh, and that was kind of the, the end of the Minneapolis Moline, but there's a lot of enthusiasts around. This particular tractor we're standing in front of, tell us about that. It's a, it's a nice older tractor. Well this tractor, we just actually I just traded for this tractor, it come out of uh, southern Illinois. Uh, oddly enough, about 15 years ago, we sold this guy some parts to build an engine for a pulling tractor, and he kind of got growed out of that, I guess, and started collecting some cars. And he called me wanting to uh, see if he was interested in it or do some trading and looking for a few, few parts so he could get it back to running to to part with it. And we ended up trading for it. So it's just a kind of strange how things happen. We sold him parts for this thing 15, 18 years ago, and now we got the whole tractor back here. So. And tell us about this tractor, what year is it and, what, and what's the horsepower of it and, and it, I, I like your story about how the day after you bought it or soon after you bought it what you did with it. Yeah the guy showed up here on a Friday afternoon with it and that night there was an antique pull right just close so I said well it starts and runs I'm taking it so I took it to the full just like we got it put some gas in and went pulling and it, it runs pretty good it, it's been in the shed for several years so it needs to retune up and then carburation and a little bit of dirt in the gas tank so it ran out of gas in the second class I pulled and it actually died on me with dirt in the sediment bowl. But this is about a 51 or 2 model U, it's a UTU, just a narrow front and um, they're 52 horse to advertise I believe is what they are and of course there's things you can do to the engines to make that change which is also pretty inter universal or interchangeable with the larger uh, bigger cubic inch engines. What's your opinion? Best tractor ever built? Oh, best tractor ever built? You'd have to break it down in a decade or two, but we were at a tractor pool just the other night and we was talking about this is better than that and I said, yeah, if we could sit down and take all the good things from all the tractor companies, we could build a pretty nice tractor. <laughs> It'd be funny color, I guess. <laughs> the best tractor ever built? As far as the Moline goes and the conveniences, it depends on the horsepower, but the last one of the Moline models, like the 670 Super or the G1000s, was probably the most. And there's still some out working, and people still use them and rely on them. But probably a 670 Super was the most convenient, most modern, and real universal tractor, is what I'd say. All right.
I survive on web traffic. I appreciate you watching my videos. I'd be honored if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel and like my Facebook page and share this video with other tractor enthusiasts. And if you have questions or comments, put them down below. We'll try to get back with you. Thanks for watching.